three, two, one. Here we go. Sorry, I always forget to unmute my mic. Hey, you amazing earthlings. Welcome to episode seven of Shifting the Paradigm. Before we get started with today's guest, Luis Jimenez, I just have a few quick announcements along with wearing the hoodie in honor of our guest. But it turns out he's not wearing his hoodie. So now I just feel like extra silly, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll just keep going. So for those that are new to the show or my channel, please check out a year's worth of videos where I analyze various public UFO submissions of UFO sighting footage, which is what I've been doing all before I started creating this live cast. I also have a Patreon with loads of extras, perks, and benefits, and you can help support my work on this channel. I'm just a self-funded college student, and if you love the content, I would love your support to fund more projects. For those of you who don't want to use Patreon and prefer a simpler way to support my work on this channel, I opened a single tier channel membership, which is why you can see a join button next to the subscribe button below. Click on the join button and check out the list of supporter perks and benefits. I really appreciate you joining the community. So I had some problems with the amount of questions asked la on last week's show, and I wasn't able to ask all of my questions, and I had to get through them first. For this reason, this week, Super Chats are activated for those of you who, uh, who want to have priority questions or comments that you want to make during the live chat. They are super, they super duper help me as well, and um, they are a great way for you to get involved. Okay, so a Q and A. I uh, I want to answer a question sent to me by, by one of my viewers from Frank, and he says, "Will you go back to enhancing and reviewing UFO sighting footage sometime soon?" And that is a great question. Yes. Absolutely. It's where my passion is, honestly. So I have been working on a submission portal on my website where witnesses can upload their footage for analysis. As soon as this portal is ready, I'll be doing some videos more frequently depending on how many submissions I get. Okay, so today I'm joined by my good friend, Luis Jimenez, who I joined during the Big Phone Home that reached almost 1.3 million people who, and who has interviewed me and many others in the field on his show on YouTube called Unidentified Celebrity Review. Please welcome with me, with me Mr. Luis Jimenez. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, my hair's all crazy. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? There we go. All right. I'm doing uh, see, well. See, the, the, the headphones really like are a nice hairband. <clears throat> they are. They truly are. They help. <laughs> uh, thank you for that warm introduction. I appreciate it, Christina. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's an honor to be here. I, li I, like, I like the fact that I don't have to produce it. I just <laughs> show up. <laughs> you just... That's fun. That's <laughs> much easier. <laughs> so much easier. <clears throat> I, I I feel you. I feel you on that. That's how I feel when I join your live cast. I'm like, I don't have to do anything. You've got to show up, eat my ice cream, and we're good to go. Yeah, yeah. And you bring the ice cream almost every time. So I'm glad uh, that you I, feel that comfortable. I actually had some right before we started. You're a machine. I don't know where you put all of this ice cream, but I... <laughs> I, I, my, I buy these little cones. You ever had those cones... Um, that have like a chocolate dipped vanilla on the top. Oh yeah. Those are okay. like my favorite and they make literally ones that are this big. The mini ones. So, those ones are fire. Those ones are fire. Yeah. I really oh, like those. So uh, <laughs> I want to say thank you to Gerald. Thank you so much. Love Gerald. it. Do you have any questions? 
just pop them over. And then we got a few bomb people here. Oh, Super Brava says, Luis, you are my hero. Oh, my Aww, goodness. Thank you. So I mean, yeah, that's thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Alien Girl says, hi. What's up, guys, by Jess. Nice, nice. So yeah. we're just going to go all in today and see. I get to ask the questions this time instead of vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> well, don't it's worry. Gonna be fun. It's going to be easy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So first, you know, you are really, really busy these days. April mm -hmm. was the beginning of a whirlpool, which hasn't stopped, right? I mean, no. after the big phone home, things have just gone really busy for you like what's been happening since the big phone home well i mean i think the the thing we realized as soon as we ended the big phone home was we can do this every day like we did it for eight hours it was an eight hour live stream and when we got off we're like i feel like i could have done another four hours there was so much adrenaline pumping Damn. um but then what i really realized is oh we could do this two hours a day easy <laughs> no problem you know and uh, we could just all we need is a couple of topics every day and um and i'll bring some friends get some different opinions and you know make it a um an all-inclusive discussion instead of just you know one person talking into a microphone or one-on-one -on -one interviews you know those are they're just i don't know they've been done so many times and i just don't think this this discussion really really for me anyway um screams for a round table it just screams for a lot of people to have a, di a bunch of different opinions and and not only just opinions but very thought out and very um articulated opinions because it's backed up by a lot of research and things that they've looked at and read into and um you know so it's it's fun <laughs> it's it's fun so that's what we really we've really realized so so you know to answer your question yeah it's been we've been trying to do a show every day not only because we can you know, because the news is every day. There's something happening every day. A new article's dropped and something a new fight is had on Twitter. <laughs> like, you know, there's so many things to do shows about. Uh, new TV shows are coming out that we review. So, um, you know, and there's always there's always time to remind the people also that, you know, the big phone home is not a one day thing. It's something you could do any day, every day if you wanted to. So. Right. As long as you have enough information to hit a certain topic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And just I want to go a little bit back. And I know that you recently mm -hmm. just posted on your social media that you created a short film and it got accepted into a film festival. Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah. So it's a it's a film that I made five years ago. I I shot it because I'm an actor in Los Angeles. So I write and I've I've done a lot of sketch comedy. I've done uh, years worth of improv comedy. So, um, I got together with a friend and I wrote a little, a little, um, TV pilot, which is basically, you know, just, uh, you know, three to four minute thing that sort of gives you, gives whoever's watching it the idea of how to make this into a TV show. And, um, but mine was literally just a three minute TV show. It was made for the internet, but it was the, the concept was, uh, imagine, you know, an immigrant just crossed the border and NBC went right up to him and said, hey, congratulations, you're the new late night host of, you know, you know, late night TV. And so that was the idea. And so, you know, the idea was like, well, how would an immigrant or somebody who knows nothing about late night TV do a late night television show? And so, you know, he hosts it from his scooter. It's like, you know, it's an over, there's a band, but the band isn't like, you know, a saxophone player and a guy on a keyboard. And it's just a, literally a jukebox with a guy trapped inside of it. Um, you know, like we had a, we had one of my good friends, Jake Matthews, who's uh, like a legitimate actor <laughs> and, and he, uh, he did a sketch in it. So it's like, you know, it does all of the, the things that a late night show does it, it, it has an opening band, it has an opening monologue, it's got a, a guest, it's got, you know, like sort of a couch interview, and then the show's over, you know? Uh, and instead of um, a musical guest, it's a sketch. And then, you know, so there's room for advertisers and stuff like that. Anyway, I submitted this pilot to a friend at the Los Angeles uh, International Film Festival or Latino International Film Festival, and uh, just to get an opinion, I was just like, hey, dude, you know, check this little thing I did out. Do you, is this, should I? Uh, submitted to festivals 
And he's like, I don't know. Let me take a look. And he, he, he hit me back. He's like, I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. So I sent it over to the programming director of the festival and uh, to see if she had any opinions or anything that she could maybe send your way because I couldn't really find anything wrong with it. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then she hit him back saying, I loved it. Let's put it in the festival. Is he okay with that? And I was like, absolutely. So so that's how I got into the festival. Um, it's It's a really funny, it's the best thing I've ever made. And I don't say those things lightly. It's really funny. Um, and but, are you starring uh, in it too? Yeah, I star in it. I directed it. I wrote it. I edited it. Um, I did everything on that on that pro on that um, on that sh on that show. Well, yeah. Gerald my baby. Uh, asks, where can we find this video, or when will it be um, aired? You can go to the L A, the Los Angeles. International Latino Film Festival website. It's a .org website. And you can purchase tickets to watch it during the festival because it's a virtual festival. Um, if you don't want to do that, I totally understand. It might not be worth it to see a three-minute film. <laughs> Maybe after the festival, I'll pop it again online. And then that way, it could, people could just watch it for free. That um, but, the, but I mean, the idea is to get somebody to help me make it. You know, it would be the idea. It, I want to make it a YouTube show. It is, it, it's perfect for the internet because it's something that's very shareable. It's really short, keeps your attention span. It's quick, it's in, it's out, it's over before you even know it. And you're laughing your ass off. And it's like, oh man, this is so funny. Um, so, you know, depending on what happens at the festival, you know, if somebody's interested in producing it, I may not be able to allow, I may not be allowed to put it online because then they would have the rights to it. Uh, but if nobody picks it up, yeah, I got no problem with showing it. Like, <laughs> it's not a problem. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question. Well, before, because I want to ask you a few more questions about your past before we jump into, Go for it. you know, present day. So, mm -hmm. also, you know, you did a lot of improv back in the past. Yeah. Are you still doing that? Like, are, are you involved I in can't. Active? I mean, none of, none of the theaters are open, you know, at least not yet. Um, I, I had just, um, right before the pandemic happened, I had just been accepted to the Upright Citizens Brigade sketch team, which do, does a show every month at the theater there. Um, it's a big show. And like two weeks before we, we were supposed to do that, uh, they locked everything down. And then the theater got shut down, so it's closed forever. It's never opening back up again. So I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know when these theaters, I mean, there's a couple independent theaters and stuff out here that, that still might be open when things open up, but even after things open up, I mean, how comfortable are people going to be in going into a packed room and watching live comedy? It's, it's going to be yeah. a while, you know? So that's, that's why I started my show. <laughs> so, you know, it's part of the reason anyway, it was like, well, you know, e even before the pandemic started, it was something to just keep me sharp between either live improv shows that I was doing. I mean, I was doing improv shows at least once a month, at least once a month. Um, and so, yeah, you know, between that time, between that and auditions, I wanted to do something that also sort of, you know, fed my 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 creative part of me. So that's why I started the show initially. And then when the pandemic hit, I was like, well, I'm just going to really take this into overdrive since I've got the time, you know, I've got nothing to do. Um, and it was fun, you know, and it kept my mind off of being stuck in my house and my apartment, you know, with, you know, all day. It was really boring. <laughs> yeah, for a lot of us, I think a lot of people definitely started YouTube channels during that time. It's weird. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not weird. It's totally understandable. Um, and you know, it's, hey, it's a great way to, to like I say, get those creative juices flowing. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we, we all need it. We all need it. Uh, mm -hmm. Take us back to the point in your life where you were in your acting career and you mm -hmm. got gripped by this mystery, the one about UFOs, UAP. How, how did it come into your life, this interest? Well, I has and this, this story is going to be familiar, I'm sure, with a lot of people. I started looking at this stuff way before... I I ever saw one and way before I ever started a YouTube show. I mean, the first books I would go to in the library every time we went would be the, the paranormal section, you know? So I would be the Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, and UFOs. And, but UFOs particularly, um, I remember vividly. Is it the Loch Ness Monster? Yeah. 
okay, I, I just. <laughs> that's oh, awful. did you hear? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I so, like, I, I remember vividly the, um, the Betty and Barney Hill story was one of the stories in these UFO books. And I was just hooked from then on. I would do science projects about it. I would try and talk about it all the time. And then by the time I got to middle school, everybody's like, you need to chill out with the UFO stuff. <laughs> um, like, you need to do a real science project. I was like, okay. This is and real. Then, yeah. And then, and then I didn't, and then in high school, I didn't really talk about it much unless somebody brought it up. And then I saw one you know, right before, right at the end of middle school, I saw one and, uh, it was crazy, but I didn't talk about it. Like I did not, it was cause I played football. So I was like, you know, cool jock. Well, you know, like, who, like nobody wants to hear your UFO story. So, um, and then, and then I got into acting and I really didn't think about it for, you know, I mean, again, unless somebody brought it up and naturally in conversation, I wouldn't go out of my way to talk about it. And then, and then, you know, I started getting the inkling of wanting to talk about it. And weirdly enough, at the, around that same time, that's when Lou Elizondo came walking through the doors of my restaurant. And I, and I had a you know, two hour conversation with him just sitting there with his restaurant? buddies. No, I don't own a restaurant, but I was, I was working. Oh yeah. I was worried. It's not mine, but I mean, like I, I say that because when you work in a restaurant, you kind of take possession of it as you try to work as if it's yours. So that's why I say it like that. But no, I don't own a restaurant. Um, but he came in and we had the killer conversation and I, and then I went home and I was freaking out and I was like, babe, I think I want to start a podcast about this stuff. Like it's people need to know, like, this is, cr this is crazy. Like, and she's like, you know, she supported it. And then she, for Christmas, she bought me this round light that I've got for Christmas. And she's like, here you go. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? She's like, oh, I thought you wanted to start a YouTube channel. I'm like, well, I guess I got to do one now. You know, like I, she bought me this light, so I got to do it. So that's how I really like kicked in. Um, and the rest is history, I guess, if you want to call it that. Well, this this kind of story reminds me of another actor and comedian who comes to mind. He had a very similar revelation. His name was Dan Aykroyd from the Blues mm. Brothers and the Ghostbusters. Uh, mm -hmm. Both are one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, yeah. So do you, do you know his, his story and how he... I'm very familiar with Dan Aykroyd's story. He did improv at, um, well, first of all, I believe he's a, can is he a Canadian actor? Or is he from Sh Illinois, from Chicago? I, I I'm think pretty he's sure he's Canadian. Ass. Is he? <laughs> I, I want to say he's Canadian, but a lot of those great, like Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, um, uh, Martin Short, um, you know, um, Rick Moranis, like all of those guys are Canadian. They all did a sh uh, um, uh, the show before Saturday Night Live, which was called... Um, SITV, -I, I believe, SCTV, which was Second City TV. Second City was an improv theater in Chicago. And um, that's where all of those guys went to study improv comedy under um, under the god of com improv comedy by the man of uh, by the name of Del Close. And Del Close taught all of those guys. So, so all of those dudes that went to SNL. All of those guys that, that did any sort of significant comedy in the 80s and 90s, including Dan Aykroyd, all at some point went through his hands. And um, he's always been interested in the paranormal. Uh, he's always had a fascination with it. I think at, at some point, I might be wrong on this, but I think he even had a near-death experience as a kid. Um, and then that's what I might have been what clicked it on. But he's seen UFOs. He's been apparently chased by a couple of uh, figures. Um, he's got some wild stories. I'd love to talk to Dan Aykroyd because there's, I think, a lot we could we would. Our, our, you're right. Our stories are very similar. Very, very similar. Um, he's really into the paranormal aspect of it like you are. Um, I'm sort of getting into that aspect of it since starting it. At first, when I started listening to that stuff, I was like, I don't, I don't know. know, you know, it sounds a little kooky. And then and then when people start, you know, really breaking it down on a much more sophisticated intellectual level, then you go, OK, I can see how maybe something like that might be possible. Um, 
but it's it's just hard to wrap your noodle around you know it's 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 crazy stuff but i do like dan Aykroyd. he is um he's an interesting guy very interesting guy yeah and he also had a documentary called dan Aykroyd unplugged on ufos mm -hmm. and he was mm -hmm. quite vocal on his interest on it but in recent years he's gotten pretty quiet on the topic yeah well i mean i think because that documentary specifically was directed by a pretty kooky dude um i think his name is uh david sarita if i'm not mistaken he's if you really look into the director of that film he's uh he makes some very 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 wild claims he was a very big uh name in the early 2000s when that movie came out um uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he, you're right. He has been very, very quiet about it. He did have, I think he did talk to Joe Rogan about it pretty heavily, but again, like he, like, I think somebody's a publicist or somebody got to him and said, Dan, you got to stop talking about the, like he goes, he goes really deep with it. Um, uh, and it's just, again, like if you're just saying that into a microphone, a hot mic, and there's not a ton of context with it. It yeah. might sound like you're crazy and he's trying to sell vodka. He's trying to sell movies. He's trying to, he's got a brand. And so I'm sure a publicist probably at some point was like, please, you got to stop. You're killing me. Like I can't get you interviews that nobody wants to talk about your vodka. Cause every time you come on a show, you're talking about it, but yeah, it can, it can I can be a little bit, <laughs> it can be a little difficult having those like acting and being interested in this topic can be conflicting. So I wanted to ask you if any of your friends in the showbiz world um, have confined in you in saying, uh, in saying that they're interested in the topic. They, I could tell you this, I don't know if any of them are actively looking for it, but when something big happens, I'm the first person they text or they send something to. Where they're like, oh my God, did you see this? I'm like, yes, I did a show about it two days ago. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, dude, check out what I'm doing. It's pretty good. Um, you know, but they've got kids, they've got lives, they're they're also busy actors. Like it it's I just listened to the guy who wrote the New Yorker article. I'm forgetting his name right now, about uh about you know the whole UFO issue that just dropped. He was on a podcast with David Chang, who's a chef, and he is a very analytical, no BS kind of guy. A lot of chefs are very much like that. They don't have time to dilly dally in that kind of thought. And and they got the conversation was had by three guys who really don't know a lot about this topic, but are now starting to really say to themselves, what's so wrong? with with having science say yeah this could be possible um I, they all came to that and so that like i that blew my mind because i was like wow the conversation is being had on a new yorker podcast between a a, a five-star chef and his best friend who's also a chef and this amazing new york time uh new yorker um uh author and they're really like a couple of things they got wrong specifically like you know, um, some of the aspects of trying to, of hiding things like they were like, oh, and nobody could keep this secret. And that's just not true. There's the, the military has shown very uh, over many, many times that they can easily hide tech. It's not that difficult, um, especially if it's uh, if it's in the hands of private industry, because no one has access to that publicly. So for like things like that. But the but the idea that they're having that thought, they're saying they're giving the okay to science a chef and an author are giving the okay to science and scientists to look at this you know and that's how things change so it's exciting <laughs> like i mean so so to answer your question yes you know like they are interested but it, it's it takes something like the new yorker or it takes something like those pyramid videos that corbell dropped for the anybody to really go oh damn lou check this out um but in the future we're bringing on some of those friends that know nothing about this topic, because I think that's that's a that's an aspect that a lot of us in the UFO community need to hear, <laughs> because we don't really understand that nobody knows about this. 
Like yeah. nobody, nobody really understands what's happening. And I think that's why you are in a unique position. I'm in a unique position. The debrief is in a unique position. Um, all of these channels, like UFO Jesus and, and Alien Girl and Mike and everybody who's got a channel on this topic, they are in a very unique position to put themselves in, a, in the path of a great rush of curiosity on this topic. Like people are going to be really, because something is going to happen that is going to blow people's minds and they're not going to be able to get the discussion they're looking for on Fox, ABC, CBS, NBC. They're just not going to get it there because they don't know how to talk about it. So we've positioned ourselves in this beautiful spot for a rush of curiosity and curious people to come to our channels and ask us questions and get really curious and start learning some really fascinating things about this topic and cases and and portals you know in some cases like just wild 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 things um but yeah i mean it, i think i think it's going to be fun this next year is going to be very very interesting there's a lot coming up it, i mean we have no idea what's in store for us for anyone no, i mean it doesn't matter no. what your career is and and given your acting career it must mm -hmm. have been a really brave move to start your channel and put it out there was there like an <laughs> moment that you clearly remember and you just thought to heck with all of that i'm going for this or was it just really when you got that ring light for christmas um it was oh man i mean the, my if i'm being honest my my memory's a little fuzzy on exactly when i decided it had to have been in you know, early January of last year and 2020. 2020. And like I said, I, I was I, the, my biggest trepidation. I had a couple ideas for this show. I was either going to do a political uh, uh, analysis channel where I talk about politics all day, but I really, it's just so nasty. It's such a yeah. uh, yucky place to work right now. Um, I could have done a film review show where I watch movies and play video games and do, you know, reviews on stuff like that. Cause I, I'm into that stuff. Um, but then I was like, well, do I want to be an actor in Hollywood? Maybe sometimes bashing some films in, in studios that may want to hire me in the future. Nah, probably not. So I decided against that. And then I started looking at this UFO thing really, really seriously. And then Lou Elizondo came in and then Michelle bought me the light. And then it was like, it screw it. Together. I'm just doing it. I'm doing it. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what anybody says, because I, I just, I, we were in a meeting with Michael just before I came on here, I'm putting all of my chips on the table that I don't know what this is, but I'm putting my chips on the table saying, I think something's here. And I think that looking into it is going to pay dividends down the road. And I think I'm going to hit on this all in um, because like I told, because of all the reasons I had just stated before, you know, it's something's coming and something's going to be something. People are going to be just so damn thirsty for information on this oh, yeah. um, that it's like, I mean, our channels are going to blow up. Because people are just are they're not going to know what to do with themselves, they and and that them. and that that conversation starting to be had. I mean, look at my channel. My channel is growing exponentially every day because we're having conversations every day, and these conversations go to sometimes crazy places. But we and this is why Michael's on the show. It's always brought back to grounded reality. You know, what do we know? What can we prove? what could we put on the table in front of a senator more specifically or a congressman so those are the things really 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 that we're concentrating on but yeah let's have a conversation about portals let's have a conversation about skinwalker ranch let's even laugh about it a little bit because that's the thing if you can't laugh about this topic you're gonna have a very 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 long day days <laughs> plural like it's just <laughs> It's you can't take this stuff too seriously because you're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. Everybody's going to be wrong on this um, in one way or another. Nobody's going to get it right because nobody has any idea what's going on. Um, but we doesn't mean we shouldn't talk about it. 
And and having these ideologies talking about it publicly, how has it affected your career? Not at all. Um, if anything, um, it's become a little bit of my new career to a point where I'm almost I'm almost given up acting. I haven't officially put the nail in the coffin. Um, and it's funny as I'm thinking that, as that process is in my mind. I'm getting more acting work than ever, and I just got accepted into a film festival. So it's like it's almost like that saying of the second you let go, that's when all of those things that you've just been dreaming and wishing and yearning for and working for finally start coming because you've just you don't care anymore. <laughs> like it's it's controlling the thing that I've learned about being an actor is number one rejection. The word no. I, I could deal with that any day of the week. Like you tell me no, and I'll ask you two more times. And if you don't, if you say no the third time, then I'll back out. Um, but you got to be persistent. You got to be consistent. And and you know, success is hard work and luck crossing paths. That's all it is. And sometimes it doesn't. That those paths don't cross for whatever reason. Much later than you think. And so. Yeah, I mean, I didn't care. I didn't care, Christina, and I think that sort of set me free because now I really don't give a shit. <laughs> like, I really, really don't care um, to a point where, I, like I said, I'm doing shows on this almost every day, at least Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays now. Um, and uh, it's helping me. It's not hurting me. So I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of, uh, of, of people thinking I'm weird. I'm not scared of losing work. I don't care. I don't care. And that's so powerful. <laughs> like, because I used to stress about the things I couldn't control. You know, so rejection and controlling things that are out of your control are two things I really had to learn how to do. And, but this past year, I've really let go of just everything, of caring for, like, I don't care if how I'm going to make rent, I know it's going to happen. I don't care how I'm going to, you know, uh, make this show successful. I just know it's going to happen. I, I, I don't, I don't stress about these things that I would stress about for the last 25, 30 years. Like, I, I just don't, I don't. And it's just funny how everything's just kind of coming to me now. Like, I don't need to go get anything anymore. So it's, it's, um, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> I, I agree. And, and I think when it comes to being human, we're so used to used to being stressed all the time and thinking it's the normal, but it's so unhealthy. And I'm I'm the same, like when it comes to like this kind of topic and not having to worry. I mean, like I pay for school, I pay for rent and it's tough, but like we're so passionate about it that we know everything's going to be OK. Yeah. One way or yeah. another. One way or another. You're going to I mean. You have to. <laughs> you have to. It's as simple as that. And, um, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll, like, you started this a year ago, this channel, right? Mm -hmm. During this whole pandemic was happening. But now everything has shifted gear and direction. Was this something that you expected to happen before the Big Phone Home event for your channel to blow up? Um, I mean, I knew I was going to get attention. But I tried my hardest to not put my channel name on any of this. I didn't want people to think I was trying to build my channel. Um, I knew that was going to be a byproduct of it, but I didn't want that to be the focus. That's why I never put my – you never ever on any post um, other than it saying it on my Twitter handle, put the unidentified celebrity review on any hashtag, on any of my um, – any of my uh, – um, advertising except for the poster it just says the unidentified celebrity review presents at the very top and that's it i made its own separate website i did everything in my power to make sure that people didn't look at it and go oh this guy's just trying to get youtube followers i'm genuinely trying to do something different um so i knew it was gonna i i Right before the big phone home, I started doing live streams and I stopped editing my shows. And I, and I saw right from the start, I'm getting more people watching a live stream than I am in four days of uh, 
an edited version of my show. Okay, got to go where the data goes, you know. I did it two or three more times, and every single time it was the exact same result. I'm like, okay, no more edited shows. And then that got me warmed up for the big phone home. And then when we were done with it, like I said, I the very next day we did a show. We did a recap show. Yeah, I and, remember. You know, like, like, how did you survive for the next day? Uh, I, we were we could have done a 12-hour show easily. At least I could have. Um, I, I think Michael could have too. I mean, like, it, we were so amped for it. Um, but, you know, it was our first one. We, had no, we, had, we didn't have no idea what to expect. Um, so after that was over, you know, I looked at Michael and I was like, I, I see what we have to do now. Like, we need to do a mini version of the phone home every day. We can do it every day because there's enough news. And it took us a, a little while to convince Michael that this is a topic that isn't going to plateau. And even if it does plateau, there's still 60 years of history that we could dive back into and really look at. So really, the topic is endless. Um, and and also, we could always be talking about the big phone home and sort of activating people and getting them to call Congress and trying to get more information so that that way we have more stuff to talk about. You know, <laughs> so there's there's a bunch of stuff we can do to make sure that there's this will never hit a plateau. And I'm telling you, when the when something happens that's really big, like a like a confirmation of something, people are going to be rushing to our channel because um, because I think it's it's the funnest way and the most inclusive way uh, to get as much information as you can in a very fun format. Uh, without being boring or droning, and uh, and it's all inclusive. Nobody's left out of the conversation. Not one person. Doesn't matter if you could pay zero or if you could pay a million dollars. Everybody gets the same show at the exact same time because I think that's the way this information should be presented. It's 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 if you really believe that this topic is world changing, then give it to the people. And let's change the world, <laughs> you know, like that's sort of my theory on it. Um, but oh. yeah, yeah, go on. Sorry. Oh no, 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 it's okay. No, you, you I love it. I love all of this. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, I mean, did the big phone home feel like a big gamble at the beginning? Like, what were you doing with the <sighs> UFO topic that kept you inspired to keep pushing? You know what? Let me sit down. Hold on a second. There we go. <laughs> um, so, okay, what inspired me? Okay, how did I feel about it, right, is what the question was? Like, because did it feel like a gamble at the, at the beginning when you were creating the big when, home? When I was asking, like, when I asked Sean Cahill and Alejandro Rojas and Lou Elizondo if they would be interested in doing something like this, and they all said yes, that's when I was like, uh-oh, what did I do? You know, I, I've put my name on something with some very – serious people and i don't want to let them down and i don't want to look like an idiot most then it just got bigger after that <laughs> um yeah no the, the pressure started bounding and then i really started to get a good idea of um what i had to do um so oh, it was i was scared i was terrified that nobody was going to show up it was like um you know when I know you don't do a lot of partying, Christina, but when you do I invite, do I, I know, I know. <laughs> well, well, maybe you can relate to this. Let's see. Let's see if you can relate to this analogy. But when, let's say you're having a house party and you invite a hundred people, you know, maybe if a good turnout would be 30, right? But more than likely you'll probably get like five or 10 and it'll be fun, but it won't be like this huge epic thing that you wanted. And that's kind of what I was thinking that was going to happen with this. Um, I was very, I, I did for 60 straight days, my, my goal, my mission was to make sure that the wording, the seriousness, the tone, the requests, um, everything that we were asking from our senators and congressmen and um, what, we're, what we were putting on the website and the verbiage we used to describe the event, all of that and building the list, the congressional list and the senatorial list that I put on the website, all of that stuff was my effort 
to make Lou Elizondo, Sean Cahill, I was trying to get Christopher Mellon, any one of these government officials, I was trying to get journalists, serious people. So when I presented them with the information, they could look at it and go, oh, this isn't Storm Area 51. I did not want them to think that that's what this was. And so, <laughs> you know, literally, I'd say 48 hours before, maybe 24 hours before the event, I had no idea if, uh, if Lou or Sean were coming. And then when I sent out the schedule, they were like the first ones that put their name on it. I was like, Ooh, my like, gosh. it was just like a huge <laughs> relief. It was like, that was a confirmation for me that, okay, they approve of the way I did it. Um, now let's make sure when they come on, we don't make them look like fools. And, and we, this is an effort that, that actually helps them because that's, that was the original thought is, you know, looking at Lou Elizondo and seeing how tired he was, like he needs an army. He needs a, a, a group of people behind him to back him up by making phone calls and, and making letters and sending emails and sending tweets to local and state representatives. He desperately needs that help. And so that's what I was trying to do was just help him and Christopher Mellon as much as I humanly could. Um, I don't know what the effect was. I mean, you said at the top of the show, we reached 1.3 million people, which means that 1.3 million people at some point while they were scrolling through their media, that event came in front of their face. You know, we've had about 20,000 people watch the event. And so that is massive. If a quarter of that called Congress, that is huge, huge. I, the thing that I really want to make sure next year uh, when we do the big phone home, I just didn't have the money and I didn't have the time to organize this was analytics. I want to know how many people activated themselves. I want to know how many people called and I want a way to track it. So that way, when we do the big phone home, we can show this tracker growing as people are making calls and calling Congress. So those are some of the ideas that we're thinking about and throwing around right now. Um, but I think, yeah, I think we did a pretty good job. So, I mean, yes, I was really, 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 really nervous. And then I wasn't nervous about the show. I knew we were going to, destroy the show me and michael were gonna we honestly we did almost almost i wouldn't say no prep we talked about the show five or six times but we never worried about okay what are we going to talk about at 10 o'clock what are we going to talk about at 11 what are we going to do like there was never we never had that discussion it was just like okay this show's going to kick ass it's going to be <laughs> great and we're going to have a great conversation with a whole bunch of people and we'll be able to make it flow because you and i are good at that um yeah, and it did. Are. It worked. It worked. Um, so then, you know, yeah, that's, I mean, what, once the show, I was just wanting to be the, sh the show to be over. <laughs> I wanted it to be over so I can just sit back and see what was the effect of it. Did it work? Did, did we have an impact? And I think we did. I, I, mean, I, I think, think you guys, I think you guys did. Uh, Carl yeah. Vibe has mm -hmm. a question and he says, if you could have your top three dream guests agree to come onto the next phone home, who would it be? Good question. I would say Joe Rogan. I would say, hmm, Lex Fridman and Michu Kaku. Those would be my three. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I don't think that's a, I don't think that's crazy. No, no. You know year. what? Look, any anything is possible. Anything yeah. is possible. Um, hey guys, super chat questions really help me out. Keep that in mind. Okay. So I have an, so here's another thing. So so I want to give a shout out to your dad, who I think should be called UFO Morpheus instead of UFO <laughs> Dad. Uh, yeah. Give us give us own channel uh, going and yeah. becoming the Morpheus of the movement. Those glasses are fantastic. Um, but in respect to your dad, what degree of influence has his has his interest in the topic had on you? Zero. Zero. He never, he's never really talked about this. He, he got me into, we lived in Florida and one of my earliest memories was the, um, uh, the challenger space shuttle disaster. I remember watching that in school. Like it was a big deal because it was the first teacher to go into space and she was female. And so I, our school was playing it because it was like all the teachers were really, really proud of that moment and it blew up 
on live television in front of everyone. And it was crazy. It was a crazy, crazy moment. But I remember my dad. My dad is very, very good at math. He's a, a little bit of a mathematician. Um, he's a smart guy. He's always been interested in space and military tech. So from that aspect, he, you know, he got me sort of into the science fiction. Like he first movie. My dad's hilarious. Um, he got me into Star Wars. Uh, that was one of the first films he showed me. But then he, 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 uh, he the funny story. He, he, uh, he. We used to do a lot of fishing when I was a kid, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to watch a movie about fishing?" And I'm like, "Yes, of course." And I think I was four, five years old, and he pops in Jaws, uh, which is a movie about fishing. <laughs> to be fair. Uh, but yeah, that, that was like his, uh, hilarious joke, uh, to play, <laughs> you know, I had never, I, I was terrified to go in the water for years. Um, I bet, I bet. but yeah, so that's my dad. Like my dad's just a character. He's just a, he's, that's why I wanted to bring him on. Cause I had a feeling I was like, I think my people are going to like my dad. He's such a goofball. And, and you, and I was right. Like he is, you know, so we, he made his, he made his debut on the big phone home and people went crazy for the ch in the chat for him. So I was like, well, I guess that means we got to bring back, you know, the UFO dad. So I, I, I hit him up after the, U the <laughs> big phone home. I was like, pop, you got to go get the UFO Twitter handle UFO dad. I'm like, you're going to be huge on Twitter. And, uh, and yeah, he's, he's loving it. He, he loves every set. He'd love it. He loves it. And it's cool because I get to talk to my dad now almost every day. So. Aww. And Donald says Latino Morpheus. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember who the first person was that made that, but I laughed out loud. I'm not even joking. I, I, I verbally was laughing. It was that damn funny. What? My dollar chat! Woo so the question is, have either of you been able to find Cynthia Hyde's report of the aerial school in Rua, did I say it right? Rua, Zimbabwe, titled mm -hmm. UFO Flap at Zimbabwe Case Number 95. Hmm. I'll let you answer. Hmm. I'll let you answer first. No. No. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I have not read that report. I do know the aerial school in Rua, Zimbabwe. Um, I was actually was talking. I was talking to Ralph Blumenthal last night in a um, in a clubhouse chat, and um, I asked him, you know, with all of the all of the archival footage of of Dr. John Mack going to that school in Zimbabwe and talking to the kids. Um, I thought it would be either a a good book or b a really good film. Oh. To, to, to show that archive footage of all the kids, maybe have interviews with them now as adults. Like, I would love to talk to their parents. I'd love to see the perspective from their parents, their teachers. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, did you watch the movie by James Fox? The I did. I did. They they touched on it, though. I they felt did. like I, 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 it was my least favorite part of the film because it's the most of what I've wanted to see. I was like, I wish James Fox made this two films because he would have been able to sell two films no problem. Um, I mean, but see, I, it I was cool though. I, I think it's a landmark case because he yeah. did a lot of work on investigating that. But, yeah, no, um, he but, did. No, go, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, no. I, well, first of all, you got a $50 DKK. I don't know what D, if that, I don't know what that is. It's $50 USD, but that's awesome. I always like those big, big numbers. It could be, it could be like what happened in my show the other day. <laughs> could, could be something very small, but hey, thanks for sending that, right? Christian Thompson. Thank you. So, but, um, so this question, oh, I missed it. What does it say? Oh, it says. What's the best UFO case? Oh, thank you. Um, there, there's so many good ones. There's a there's lot of so good many ones. good ones. There's a lot of good ones. But going back to James Fox, like I, th I think you're right. It is a monumental case. Um, I think, oh God, because I'm such a film nerd. I'm such a film buff. Like, and and I don't blame James Fox for this. I'm not knocking his film. I, I honestly said I reviewed his film and I said if I was going to start a college course on this topic the phenomenon and the first two seasons of unidentified would be the curriculum for the course. Um, mm. you ha you'd have to watch those films, uh, as part of the course. Yes. yes. Um, I agree. so that's how much I enjoyed it. 
with that said, you could have made an entire film about Jacques Vallée, Hynek, and uh, Lee Spiegel going to the UN. That could have been its own movie. You could make, I honestly, I think you could do that now as a film, like a recreated film, and it would be awesome. But currently, currently, what's your favorite case? Currently, um, I mean, I'd have to, well, I'd have to say, uh, you know, probably the David Fravor case. David Fravor, that one's pretty good. I I would say mine, honestly, is the Travis Walton case, and I loved the movie and the book. Yeah, the movie was, the movie horrified me. I think I was 13 years old when that film came out. So I was absolutely terrified of it. But it is cool. It is a cool it is movie. So what? Good. Thanks, What's up, Mav? Mav? Thank Mav. Is it? I said Mav. I th- Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Mav, Mav. I, it, well, it's a lady. She's uh, she, she's in my chat all the time. She's so sweet. Aww. Yeah. Well, she said, are either of you familiar with the Brett Weinstein's unity movement? He has been working to build nonpartisan bridges that I think would help the UFO fam and bringing new folks in. in. Big hugs to you both. Well, big hugs to you too. Actually, I have small arms, so I really got like a small hug. <laughs> um, I'm not familiar with Brett Weinstein's Unity Movement. I'll be honest with you. Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with it either, but I will look been, into it. He has been working to build nonpartisan bridges that I think would help the UFO fam and bringing new folks in. I mean, he sounds cool to me. I mean, I'm always about non, you know. Um, making the UAP topic a nonpartisan issue. That's big for me, you know? So, because it is, it is a nonpartisan issue. It doesn't matter who you are, Republican, Democrat, independent, vegan, meat eater. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have some interest in this. I agree, except vegan cheese. That's like not good. Yeah, I don't do anything vegan, so. <laughs> That's just, those are like working in a restaurant that, Mm-hmm. No. So, uh, I want to ask you about your thoughts for the future with the end of UFO secrecy. Let's say there's a type of disclosure coming. Mm-hmm. What are you expecting? I'm expecting people to go back to work. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's going to be uh, a big uh, for us. It's going to be huge. Um, I think for a, a big part of the American people or the w- people of the world, it'll it'll be a big, big deal. It depends on what it is, Christina. You know, like if it's a video, people will get excited. I think we're gonna get a lot of people, you know, again, coming to our shows, looking for information, looking for aspects on this kind of stuff. If it's a ship uh, and, you know, it's something that the, the military whips out and shows people, which I don't think will happen. I don't think this will be something that's revealed by the military. If it reveals, it will be revealing itself, I think. Um, but then it'll always be debunkers and say it's drones of some sort. Sh- yeah. So but you, I, I think we are worse critics when it comes to uh, disclosure that you will believe either the, the lies or the facts. Right. Just depends on the person's mentality. No, I agree with that. I just, I think though, you're gonna have a hard time denying it when it's parked above your city. You know, if it does that, if that's the way it even communicates with us, who knows? Maybe it could be telepathically, where all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of us at the same time start hearing the same thing. Who knows? Who knows how it's gonna come? But it's, however, it does come. If it's that undeniable. I think it'll be like a week or so of people maybe freaking out and getting re- and talking about it intensely, and then it'll settle down and people will go back to normal. But if it's like an invasion or something, or if it's something that puts people's lives in danger, then obviously, like <laughs> going back to normal, that'll never happen. It just depends. It depends. It's a tough question to answer because there's so many scenarios to that question. Like what? It just depends on what you define as disclosure. You say, you know, when you ask a question, it was like, you know, a major event. So when I think of major event in my mind, I think of um, Independence Day without all of the explosions. Just a bunch of ships parked over major cities, so it's one billion percent undeniable. Or like um, sort of the scenario in Close Encounters of the Third Kind or The Arrival. You know, those great, great sci-fi movies. Um, yeah, I, I, it's going to be it's gonna be interesting. I, I, I can't predict it, but 
I don't think the economies will stop. I don't think people stop going to work. I don't think, um, you know, it'll be like 9-11, where for maybe a couple of days, people are either somber or, or depressed or super happy and elated. And then it's like, okay, okay, well, I got to, I kids, kids got to eat and... You know, right. bills got to get paid. You still got stuff to do. You know, well, creepy if, little books so that they're already among us. Also, thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah, that's a so cool. Nice dono. Thank you for uh, for helping the lady out. Um, yeah, his his YouTube channel solid, guys. Go check him out. Oh, I got it. I didn't know he had a YouTube channel. Cool. I'll go check yeah. him out because he's been in my chat. And he's also he's also throwing some some dala dala bills, y'all. Yeah. He does um, lies like all the time, and oh, they're cool. they're pretty interesting. Well, dude, come on my show, man. Request <laughs> re, go to my link tree and request a um a show date. Which, by the way, people, I don't know what's going on, but like I've got you could schedule to either be on my show or ask me to be on your show, and people have been confusing the ask me to be on your show with. I'm coming on this day. I'm like, why are you, why are you not reading the schedule? Like, it's so clear. No one's I, used to it. No one's used to it. Oh wow! I was, I got in an argument today with a guy. He's like, he he picked the wrong date. I was like, I was like, guy, you you, you I told you I'm available these days, this day, this day, from this day to this time for the next ten weeks. You could pick a schedule in any one of those days, any one of those times. And uh, and he picked right in the middle of the week where I cannot talk to him. And I'm like, why did you do that? Like it, it and then when I asked him to go back, he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, OK, well, then you're not coming on my show. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, I can't. I'm a one man. He thinks I'm like a, a, a like a, a, a big production. He thinks like I'm, a, you know, I've got assistance and all this stuff. I'm like, dude, it's just me. It's just me, man. Like I don't have assistance. I don't have a big production team. Not yet. Um, Not I, yet. I mean, you know, from your lips to God's ears, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any active boots on the ground re that you do research yourself, or do you plan on going going to any Sky Watch events in the future? Maybe hot spot areas around the state or the country. To answer your first question, no, I'm not a researcher. Um, I don't have any boots on the ground. Would if somebody invited me to go research something, yeah, that would be cool as hell. Um, but I'm not. I don't think that's something I would actively do, just because I don't. I don't have the time. Um, I do have something planned. Something we're. I don't. We don't have a date yet. But me and uh, Jeremy McGowan, he invited me out to Vegas, which is not far from me, uh, to go take a ride in the Osiris and do some sky watching in that awesome monstrosity of a machine. So uh, do some sky hub and see how that thing works. And I was gonna make a little film about it, you know, a little just sort of trip film, little, like a vlog or something. Um, but- I'd watch have it. Yeah, no, it'll be, it would be awesome. Um, but we don't have a date for that yet because my brother's getting married this year. I haven't seen my family in almost two years. Like I gotta go back home, you know, before I go take a trip on, a, on you know, in Vegas for a couple of days with some, in somebody's truck. Like my family would be like, what the hell are you doing? You haven't seen us in two years. I'm like, I'm doing UFO research. They would kill me. My mother specifically. <laughs> priorities, priorities. Exactly. <laughs> given, given the tremendous response, uh, will you keep the big phone home as an annual event or do you think it would be a good idea to start doing it twice a year? Well, you brought up the idea of twice a year, and I think it's not a bad one. Um, I, I, honestly, we could do a big phone home tomorrow if we wanted to. You know, like we could do it tomorrow, and like I say to everybody, you could do it every day. It doesn't we don't have to be doing a live stream for you to take part in the big phone home? But I understand why people like it, and it's fun. Um, I wanted to wait a year only because it gives me a full year to really, really organize it, um, you know, and 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 uh, do some things that I really wanted to do this first time around. But you know, if the stars line up and we can get those things done in six months, and let's say we get. You know, before before on June 25th, we get something in this report or preliminary report, and let's say it's delayed. Six months would be right around the time a big phone home would be needed right before that extra 180 day runs out. Right. So, you know, it could be effective to do it right before an extension date ends. 
it just depends. We have to kind of wait and see. I think if if there's a 180 day extension, I think getting up another big phone home before that would be imperative. Um, so yeah, it just depends. If they if they put out a report and they're like nothing else is coming, um, then I think I'll wait a year. You know, and see if we can pressure them to give us another report and touch just, you know, I think we'll also get information from sort of the feeling of Congress and senators. If something like that happened, I think we would we would there'd be ways for us to get information to see um, to see, you know, what would be the best play? Do we wait a year or do we go at this before a year? Um, I'm going to wait for this report and make a decision on that um i think that's what i'm gonna do but no 100 percent, without a doubt we're doing another one that is for sure that's for sure yeah louise can you tell people where they can find you on social media yes um my handle's right there that's my twitter handle i've got a link tree in there and my link tree will lead you to everything I do, every single channel, every website, every everything I post, my Patreon. Um, yeah, so find me at Lou Angeles. Oh, thank you so much for joining me today, Luis Jimenez. You were fantastic. So, guys, that's all for now. Thanks for being with us today. And for my Patreon subscribers, one of the perks is access to an extra 15 minutes of questions and answers, which will be posted later this evening. So head over to my Patreon to get access to my Discord chat server and other great benefits. Again, thanks for joining us today. And keep your eyes on the skies.